Good morning students. Today we will start with adaptation and plants to reduce excessive transpiration. Many plants and especially those growing in dry climate have evolved a variety of permanent adaptations to curtail transpiration. And some of these adaptations are number one sunken stomata. These stomata may be sunken or covered with hair like in this case. These stomata are sunken in the pit and hair are present and this uh, happens in the plant nerium and that reduces the rate of transpiration because these stomata are not directly exposed to sunlight. Then fewer stomata, the number of stomata may be reduced in some of the plants to reduce transpiration. Then number of narrow leaves, the leaves may become narrower to reduce the surface area as for example nerium. Then reduced exposed surfaces. In some cases leaves may become wavy, rolled or folded to reduce exposed surface. If they are rolled or if they are folded then exposed surface is less and that reduces the rate of transpiration. Loss of leaves. In some cases leaves may be dropped or may be absent or changed into spines as in case of the cactus. Then thick cuticle. The leaves may be covered by thick cuticle for example banyan and most evergreen trees. So these are certain adaptations which are there in plants to reduce the transpiration. Next we come over to the progress check. How will the following conditions affect transpiration? Still air. Still air will reduce the rate of transpiration because the water vapor won't be carried away from the surface quickly. Then midday high temperature that increases the rate of transpiration because evaporation increases with the increase in temperature. Dry air again increases the rate of transpiration because dry air can hold more of the water vapor. Dim sunlight. Dim sunlight reduces the rate of transpiration because these tomato they get partially closed. Then insufficient absorption of water by the roots also results in the partial closure of stomata or wilting of the leaves which reduces the rate of transpiration. Then list any three adaptations in plants to reduce transpiration. We have just now done number one sunken stomata, number two fewer stomata, number three narrower leaves. Next we come over to the significance of transpiration. Transpiration has great significance for plant and its main advantages are cooling, creating suction force and distributing water. Cooling effect. Evaporation reduces temperature of the leaf surface. Therefore transpiration is useful to the plants on hot sunny day because it keeps the plant uh, cool and the heat does not destroy the enzymes of the plant. Then. then suction force. Transpiration helps in the ascent of sap by producing a suction force acting from the top of the plant. Evaporation from the leaves concentrates the cell saps and increases their osmotic pressure and this draws water from the cells at the lower level in a sequential manner that is ascent of sap occurs and finally favors the absorption of water from the soil. So when water is lost from the leaves then the uh, I had told you earlier also the leaf cells become deficient in water and the water from the adjoining cells move into this and from the xylem of the stem and then from the xylem of the root and finally from root hair the water is absorbed from the soil. So 
this transpiration sets up a suction force and this figure 5.12 also represents the transpiration stream as the water evaporates from the leaves the suction force is produced at the top of the plant drawing more water up through the stem and making the root absorb more of it from the soil and third one is distribution of water and mineral source since leaves are present at the tip of all branches and twigs the transpiration from their surfaces tend to draw water towards them and thus help in the distribution of water throughout the plant body and higher the rate of transpiration greater the rate of absorption of water and solutes from the soil so this much for today